Jared here from SoundGuitarLessons.com. I have a game-changing left-hand classical guitar technique tip for you in this video. And seriously, everyone should know about this technique that comes from classical guitar training. You can noticeably get better at guitar today with this tip. This is something I've talked about before here and there in other videos. I talk about it in my courses when I'm talking about technique, but I want to go back to when I first figured this out, when I first learned about this and how it drastically improved my guitar playing by discovering to switch chords uh, in certain contexts in a certain kind of way. So here's the tip. I'm just going to give it to you right away and then we're going to go into a piece of music to show examples and show specifically the piece of music where I uh, figured out the power of this. It's very simple. It's that you want to put your left hand fingers down when you need them or prepare your left hand fingers on the fretboard when you need them or slightly before you need them and don't switch to chord shapes if you are not needing to play all of those chords at the same time. So I have said that in other places, but let's look at some really, really good specific examples. Like I said, I'm going to go into the classical piece that where I learned this, and then I'm going to show examples of jazz chords and jazz comping and finger picking and strumming chords and even improvising and how if we can take this to heart, it is uh, truly a game changer for our technique and will help us be more relaxed, which is the ultimate goal of good technique to sound smooth, under control, expressive, everything we want out of music. So I learned this the hard way a long time ago when I was working on a classical piece called Milanga by Jorge Cardozo. Milanga is uh, the name of this piece, but it's Milanga is just a genre of music. It's a South American music genre related to the tango and considered the, uh, the precursor to the tango. So here is the piece, okay? And don't worry about what I'm doing. Uh, compositionally. I'm going to actually analyze and break this down because it's very beautiful and very cool. We're going to talk about the theory of it in my next video. But this is it. This is the beginning of it. It's a, it's a beautiful piece that goes many places, but this is the intro. into a lot more, but let's talk about that intro for a second, okay? So this chord, which I'll talk about the chords next time, but this is D minor. Okay, this next chord shape, which kind of looks like it's a major seven shape if you know some seventh chords, but it's not. Um, okay, so I was having a hard time switching from this to this, okay? Because I was thinking, I gotta switch to that chord shape. Okay, I gotta switch to the next chord shape, the next chord shape, this one especially and then having to get over here, okay? And I literally just couldn't do it. Like I was really tense, I was gripping, I was, it was it was not connected feeling, it was not smooth, it was not at all how we want solo guitar music to sound. So here's how it changed overnight for me, playing this chord, and then reaching to the bass note of the next chord by itself, then lifting off the rest of it, playing that open E, and then the pinky goes down and then these other two notes go down because you play them in that order. Okay, so watch very slowly. Okay, and the same with the rest of it. I'll play it slowly so you can watch the fingers move as I need them. Okay, now if there's a common note, I'm keeping it down. And not only that, there's always exceptions to this and the point of it is to make things easier. So don't ever do uh, a piece of don't ever follow a piece of advice from me or from anyone that um, just to follow it right it's to make things easier know why that it's there so this is to make it easier and be more relaxed and therefore play uh, more accurately and more expressively so um, here's a case where I'm keep I'm keeping the pinky touching I think of this as tracking along a finger I'm not holding it down but that pinky is gonna track along this string and keep touching the string and then actually be prepared ahead of time. So there's always little exceptions. So let yourself do what you need to do to play something uh, really relaxed and nice. Here's this next score change, the second time through, is gonna go to this shape, which again, I'll talk about this next week. This could be thought of as B flat major six or G minor seven, and we'll talk about the classical composition kind of aspect of it next time. But I'm gonna go to this note here, and then as I need it, as I need it, as I need it. That made it smooth. There's no way I could jump to this shape and play that relaxed and smooth and connected. It would 
cut off previous notes, it would make extra sound, it would, it would cause tension, all of that. So it is absolutely the secret. If I continue on, this is beautiful here, this A. Okay, I get this moment of like a typical cowboy A7 chord, but I'm putting down, and it's like a shape that a lot of people would know, but I'm not thinking of it as a shape, I'm thinking of it as what individual notes do I need? That C sharp or the third of the chord goes down, this fifth of the chord goes down, you don't have to know what it is in the chord, but just that's going down, that's going down as I need them. Now, of course, this is contextual. This is when it works for us. It's usually solo guitar music, or even if you're playing two notes at once or something like that, uh, just whatever comes up in the order that it comes up, you want to actually put your fingers down. It doesn't have to be right when it when it's needed. It can be a little early, but it's, it's kind of in that order, in a relaxed order. R remember, whatever is easier is going to be um, easier to be more expressive with as music and fluent with as music. Um, so if you put your fingers down early, but you're perfectly relaxed, you don't make extra sound from it, there's not extra tension from it, uh, that can be fine. This is a solution for a reason for a result, not just a thing to do. Uh, and it, it does make things more relaxed and um, easier to play. So this piece of music, which when I started it was too advanced for me. I was like, I, this is out of my league physically, I can't do this. And then I worked on it in this new way and it just, it takes the habit and the coordination of moving things in the right order. It's not instant in that sense, but as soon as you start working on moving your fingers in the order that you want them to move, it does actually level up your sound, your playing, your technique, your ability, what you have um, within your grasp technique-wise very quickly. So it works in all kinds of other genres and contexts. Let's say jazz comping. Okay doing like a slight little walking thing. I have a whole series on uh, walking uh, bass notes while playing jazz chords. Check that out, I'll put a link in the description, but boom, boom, just that note, then the chord above it, boom, boom, just that note, then the chord above it, etc. Or, you know, any bigger chords too, or even like inversions. I do that all the time. Instead of jumping to the shape, I play the bottom note, then the top note, then the middle notes, because it is easier to play, but it also sounds rather sophisticated um, and intentional that you're kind of orchestrating uh, with the voicing. So that's an example with um, jazz chords, certainly with finger picking. I have several finger picking videos on the channel, including the top four uh, finger picking patterns, and this is one of them. I'll put a link to that video in the description, but if we go even, you know, these first two notes, the bottom note and the top note are played first, and then I'll put that middle note down as needed. So, or even in order, those two individual notes, right? And if you have to jump to a chord, then you have to jump to a chord, like this has to be barred, you know, so it's case by case by case by case. Uh, so with finger picking, it is absolutely um, beneficial as well. And even strumming chords, and you'd think that that's the situation where it's not the case, but with strumming chords, um, and I talked about this in my uh, strumming pattern video, top five strumming patterns, which um, I put out recently, I'll put a link to the description in that. You don't really want to just be strumming every string equally. So if you do kind of orchestrate your strumming a little bit, you can strum the bottom string, bottom kind of batch of strings, and then the top. Well, I do that all the time. If I'm jumping, let's say, if I'm you know, playing this C, and then I go to a G, I might put these two fingers down and strum the bottom and then strum the top. Not because I need that, because it's easier in, in that case necessarily, but it is just my habit to be so kind of economical with my um, energy and my movement that I'm, why would I put it down until I'm actually gonna play it? So what I wanna play is connected to what I put down here, and that's the habit we wanna get over um, a long period of time. Again, just use this when you notice that you, you really see why it's helpful. Don't make it, don't have it be something that makes it harder for you if there's not a result that um, improves your execution and your outcome with your actual music playing. Like I said, this is very solo guitar related, which um, is confused sometimes with playing you know, playing guitar solos, but solo guitar means um, music that is uh, complete just on one guitar instrument. You're usually playing bass, melody, harmony all at once. Um, I have a free solo guitar arrangement pack, sheet music and tabs, uh, totally for free with several arrangements. You can get that with the link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon. Classical guitar is a big part of my background, even though I don't talk about it a ton on this channel, but I did do a series 
uh, about playing classical guitar without nails because I switched from playing classical guitar with nails to without nails and it's uh, quite a process that I'm still in but I have a series about it kind of documenting that if you want to check that out I'll put a link to it right on the screen here if you're watching on YouTube and there will be a link in the description as well I post a new lesson video every week next week we're gonna take me longer this piece at least the first part of it and analyze the chords analyze the composition look at the voice leading uh, really fun stuff to do hope to see you in that lesson thanks so much for watching take care and happy practicing